In a fresh effort to foster dialogue and ease tensions, the West African bloc has decided to lift coup sanctions on Niger. Greetings, everyone. Today's video will focus on the recent developments regarding the lifting of travel and economic sanctions on Niger by the Economic Community of West African States, the COAS. The objective behind this decision is to promote dialogue within the country. Initially, the sanctions were implemented to reverse the coup. However, they inadvertently strengthened the junta in Niger, as well as in Mali and Burkina Faso, both of which were also affected by coups. Consequently, these three nations formed an alliance and announced their unprecedented decision to withdraw from the 15-member bloc last month. ECOWAS has emphasized the need for the junta-led countries to reconsider their choice to leave the regional bloc. Without further delay, let us begin our discussion. In a renewed effort to promote dialogue and address the challenges facing the region, the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, announced on Saturday the lifting of travel and economic sanctions imposed on Niger following last year's coup. The decision comes as ECOWAS also called on three junta-led nations to reconsider their withdrawal from the regional bloc. The president of the ECOWAS Commission, Omar Alieu Touré, confirmed that the sanctions would be immediately lifted after a meeting held in Nigeria's capital, Abuja. The coup in Niger led to the closure of borders with neighboring countries and the suspension of financial and commercial transactions, resulting in a loss of over 70% of Niger's electricity supply and frozen assets in external banks. Additionally, significant amounts of aid were withheld as a consequence of the political situation. The recent imposition of sanctions had an unintended consequence in Niger, Mali and Burkina Faso, as it only served to strengthen the resolve of the ruling juntas in these countries. In a surprising turn of events, the three nations decided to form an alliance and make the unprecedented announcement that they were withdrawing from the 15-member bloc. This withdrawal has been deemed by analysts as the bloc's most significant crisis since its establishment in 1975. However, in a move to alleviate the suffering caused by the sanctions, Niger's spokesperson Touré stated that the lifting of sanctions on Niger was purely based on humanitarian grounds. It is important to note that while some targeted and political sanctions remain in place, none of the conditions set by ECOWAS for the lifting of sanctions have been met. These conditions included the release of Niger's deposed president from custody and a prompt return to civilian rule by the junta. Additionally, ECOWAS has lifted the ban on the recruitment of Malians for professional positions within the organization. Furthermore, financial and economic sanctions have been reinstated against Guinea, which is also under military rule. In a departure from its customary practice of excluding countries affected by coups from important gatherings, the bloc extended an invitation to officials from junta-led nations to participate in technical and consultative meetings of ECOWAS, as well as all security-related meetings. This represents a significant shift in approach. Touré emphasized that the ECOWAS Authority is urging these countries to reconsider their decision to withdraw from the bloc, highlighting the numerous benefits that member states and their citizens enjoy within the community. The timing of Saturday's summit is crucial, as the 49-year-old bloc faces the looming threat of disintegration and a recent upsurge in coup d'etat, driven by dissatisfaction with the performance of elected governments that have failed to adequately utilize the region's mineral resources for the benefit of their citizens. At the commencement of the summit, Bola Tinubu, the Nigerian president and current chairman of ECOWAS, emphasized the need for a re-evaluation of the bloc's current approach towards establishing constitutional order in member states. While ECOWAS has established itself as the foremost political and economic authority in West Africa, it has encountered difficulties in addressing the pressing issue of the Sahel. This vast arid region south of the Sahara Desert, spanning multiple West African countries, has become a hotbed of violence perpetrated by Islamic extremists and rebels. Consequently, elected governments have been overthrown by military forces. The recent wave of nine coups in West and Central Africa, which began in 2020, follows a similar pattern, with coup leaders accusing governments of inadequate security measures and governance. 
It is worth noting that the majority of the countries affected by these coups are among the world's poorest and least developed nations. According to Karim Manuel, an analyst specializing in the Middle East and Africa for the Economist Intelligence Unit, the imposition of sanctions on Niger and the looming possibility of military intervention to overturn the coup were the primary factors that inevitably led to the withdrawal of the three countries from the bloc. This withdrawal will result in a growing fragmentation and division within the West African region. Furthermore, Manuel asserts that the formation of a new alliance between Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger not only contributes to the fragmentation of the West African bloc, but also signifies a counterforce against the long-standing structures that have shaped the region for decades. To support our channel's growth and ensure broader awareness, kindly hit the like and subscribe buttons. This will help us reach more individuals and disseminate valuable information. Thank you in advance.